at 7 o'clock, so please, please join me for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, this time I'd accept a motion for the consent agenda. Excuse me, could you turn the microphones on? Yep. Yes. <laughs> Move for approval. Second. second. Move and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have a single action item regarding resolution of appreciation for the Silver Fox Foundation. I'd like to go ahead and read that. Whereas the members of the Silver Falls School Board take this means to express their appreciation of the Silver Fox Foundation and whereas the Silver Fox Foundation has supported the activities and athletics of Silver Falls School District for more than 30 years and whereas the Silver Fox Foundation is a philanthropic and volunteer based nonprofit organization whose mission is to providing support to all schools and district and whereas the Silver Fox Foundation has provided support for school related activities and projects including athletic school scoreboards, Lego robotics, band and choir projects, annual sponsor of Girls State and Boys State, facility planning, original architectural design of the high school athletic area and most recently planning and fundraising for the McGinnis Field Turf Upgrade Project, and whereas the Silver Fox Foundation has provided <coughs> support as a funding flow-through organization for numerous school and community-based projects such as Project Graduation, Future Foxes Pop Warner and Cheer, Silverton Middle School Parent Teacher Club, Silverton High School Marching Band Uniforms, Community Kiosk, and Silverton Skate Park, and Whereas the Silver Fox Foundation is governed by a local board, including many original directors who strongly believe in giving back to the community. And whereas the Silver Fox Foundation has supported post high school, college, and career opportunities through annual student scholarships. And whereas the Silver Fox Foundation maintains tireless efforts and total commitment to the school district communities as a trademark, as trademark characteristics, therefore be it resolved that the Silver Falls School Board recognizes the decades-long contribution of the Silver Fox Foundation and encourages all members of the school district to join in this observance, recognizing the dedication and hard work of these individuals. So do we have a motion? So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I'd like to go ahead and recognize some of the members of the Silver Fox Foundation that are here. Would that guys like to stand for a moment? Really appreciate your work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Guys. Thanks, guys. Mr. Chairman, I think there may be a representative that wanted to share a few comments with the board oh, uh, this evening. Is that right? Chuck, was that you? Tag you, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on out, Chuck. Sign in. <laughs> I volunteered. You might not know the process. I was informed of the door. So, uh, um, just a little historical perspective. The foundation began, as you said, uh, over 30 years ago, it actually uh, kind of evolved at about the end of my coaching uh, at the high school as the head football coach. And uh, we had a lot of people who felt that we needed some kind of an infrastructure put together to support uh, the community and the school district in terms of being a nonprofit and a foundation that would support not just athletics, but all activities. And uh, that's been our goal. And we hope that we can continue to do that in the future. So, thanks, thanks Chuck. It's time. been yeah. very successful. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'd like to invite our student representatives, Vanessa and Rachel. Good evening. Good evening. First, we'll start with our clubs. Um, NHS just had a SACI event this previous Friday, and our ceremony will be tomorrow at 7 o'clock at the high school. And our Gay Straight Alliance had a bake sale at first Friday, and Link Crew is continuing to help the class of 2020 feel comfortable. 
and ASB is preparing for Battle Month. The committees that for different fundraisers are figuring out the dates for their events. Now we have our sports. Football had a great win against Corvallis on Friday. It was a close game, 23 to 21, and they have a home game this Thursday against South Albany. Our cross country had a meet at McMinnville this previous Friday, and will be running again at Wilsonville this upcoming Friday. Volleyball had a tournament at Glencoe over the weekend, and right now they're playing at home against Dallas. Our boys soccer lost against Woodburn on Thursday, but today we have a home game against South Albany. And girls soccer beat Woodburn at home on Thursday, and today they're playing away at South Albany. Thank you. Great. Any questions for these ladies? Thank Thanks you. for coming. Thank Appreciate Thanks. it. Okay, this next we go ahead and have an audience with visitors like to read a statement before we open it up. We'd like to welcome you to the regular business meeting of the Sewer Falls School Board. We're glad you're here and welcome you to address the board at this time. Please be certain to sign in before you present. In order to uh, ensure equity among speakers, the board will limit remarks to three minutes per individual. <coughs> if a group of three or more wishes to appoint a representative to speak on its behalf, the board will extend the time for remarks to five minutes. <coughs> Second audience with visitors will occur later in the agenda, specific to, to discussion and action, action items of this meeting. Would anybody like to address the board? Guess I went through that for nothing. <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead and move on to discussion items. Um, proposed revisions to policies DJC bidding requirements, GBM staff complaints, and IGBBA identification of talented and gifted students. These are all second readings. Any comments? All right, then deletion of policy IGBBB, identification talented gifted students among non-typical populations. This is also second reading. Uh, proposed revision to policy DJ, district pur purchasing, it's a first reading. Any comments on that one? Okay. Um, then the charter revisions as a result of these. Mr. Chairman, if I can interrupt just for a moment, sure. I apologize. Uh, I did want to cl clarify for, for the benefit of the board, and I put this in your memo, that policy uh, GBMA, which is, a, you had a first reading last month on that policy. It's, it's a new language, a statutory language, uh, specific to uh, whistleblowing uh, as it relates to employees. Uh, actually, uh, I've following conversation with Wally as well, uh, withdrew that policy. We, we have uh, uh, given some additional consideration with our legal counsel, the Hungerford Law Firm, firm on that. And while it's an OSBA proposed policy, there are a, a number of questions that were raised and so based upon Wally's recommendation at the last meeting uh, we took it to the Hungerfords and so I anticipate having a revised version at your November meeting but I do owe it to OSBA to let them know what we have some questions and also uh, a little bit more time to help have the Hungerfords help us uh, vet those changes so that will be returning but that's why you don't see it right now. And there'll be a second reading at that time at the next meeting. Uh, Correct. I'm not certain about that. If, depending upon the revisions, if, it's major, if they're significant first. enough, we may have to start over. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, charter revisions as a result of the uh, school site change for community roots uh, charter schools in our packet. Any comments or concerns on that? Sure. Okay, that'll be an action Looks item later. This, what's, what's that, Tim? Looks good to me. Okay, it'll be an action item later this evening. Um, Thought Exchange Public Engagement uh, Electronic Results. Andy. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to come out. I have a few slides to share with you. Um, okay. 
So uh, first, I want to start start off by saying uh, that the um, looks like I did that here to begin with. There we go. I want to start off by saying that uh, uh, this is a, a electronic uh, public engagement process that you, um, uh, as a district, we uh, administered last April and May. This is a very busy time in our school district, as four of you recall. Uh, uh, however, at the same time, this has been the, the, the latest or the next extension of our efforts as a district and you as a board uh, reaching out to the community and seeking input. Uh, and, and generally, with, in the case of thought exchange, we're trying to do this on an annual basis to, to allow some opportunity for uh, the public to give us input. Just as a quick reminder, what, what we heard a few year, years ago, and, and this was admittedly during our uh, attempts at uh, getting a bond election passed in this community, uh, there were quite a few things that the community shared with the school district and one of those was specific to increasing the frequency of communication and giving plenty of opportunity for the community to give us some feedback uh, you as a board and uh, us as a school district in general uh, feedback at times other than when there are controversial items going on or specifically I can remember this from a public forum that we have when the when there's not a bond election campaign occurring and so uh, this uh, the thought exchange uh, uh, application uh, I think is a very effective tool uh, it's not a survey specific to metrics that you generally would see from a survey but rather and even the folks from thought exchange <laughs> will say this is that it's a it's a method for asking questions of the community intentionally vague three questions, you know, what are we doing well, where can we improve, what other input do you have uh, to share, uh, and then they in turn uh, to capture all of that feedback and as the title suggests, they take the thoughts, uh, look for themes, similarities in the thoughts, and then send the information back out to the public through a second phase, and they call it a starring process, where you actually add stars to it, which gives some kind of indication of the importance of that topic. Uh, one of the beauties of this process is that if, if I'm as a participant don't think of something in the district or a particular school in the district, somebody else does, it comes back to me in phase two, I say, oh yeah, that's even more important to me than what I suggested the first time. So I know that's just a quick summary and quick overview for, for the four of you, uh, but I think it's important for you and for the public to hear how this process works. So there is a lot of information here and I'm not going to take a ton of time tonight but I am going to ask that you you as board members uh, take some time to review this information this will be released to the public in a web uh, with a web address tomorrow we'll send out uh, uh, an email blast to our list uh, serve we'll also put it on Facebook and uh, on the district web page uh, and the intent is for a few things for the public to take a look and, and to see what some of the information is that we're receiving for you to take a look and see what some of the information is that we're receiving and I think for us as administration within the school district for us to share these results with our respective schools uh, and for us to look for those developed themes or priorities that we should give consideration to as priorities for people in the school district so before we get into uh, the specific results and the display uh, here is not uh, ideal but when you uh, open this up you will see uh, that there are um, there are lots of, um, this is a, a dedicated web page, first of all, to Silver Falls School District, but uh, there are um, lots of things on the left, in the left column that I'm gonna start at the bottom and go up. First of all, it's just very quick to what I just described uh, with, with the process, again, sharing, the starring, uh, the discovering, uh, and then I think this is also important for you to, uh, to see is um, specific to, what's the demographic? Uh, demographic part uh, of those who participated were uh, we had and I'm pleased with this because again I think it's another beauty of this process we had s almost 700 people participate um, uh, they provided 1,371 thoughts and then those 1,371 thoughts were again distributed to us as a community which resulted in over almost 51,000 stars which is a way for an individual to prioritize those thoughts as they go through. Now, I, I also think that there's just a, something unique about the, the demographics that I want to point out to you as you take a look at this information, and again, on your own, after it's released to the public tomorrow. Uh, we did have a, a very good turnout of parents, 450 uh, of the 688 folks. We had quite a few staff members, 213, uh, who participated in this. And I, and, I, and I share that with you because I think it's important to recognize that a third of the results, or almost a third of 
the results are are from staff members and you'll see that with some of the comments some of the thoughts that are are shared I was a little surprised uh, at, at the those who uh, these by the way are all self-identified um, uh, folks uh, 16 people who consider themselves just specific community members and not as a parent or guardian and then two students participated as well I think we as a district, uh, uh, one of the takeaways from this is to do everything we can to promote this process and get as many people as we can signed up for our uh, uh, email within the district because email is how we distribute this in the first place. It's also on the website, but it's something that uh, we want people to participate in. So I'd love to see the community member uh, input a little bit higher. So uh, just um, Taking a look at some of the other uh, very specific things, I, I think it's important, by the way, to take a look at all three uh, things that people appreciate, things that we could improve, and additional thoughts about the schools and district. <coughs> you can surely uh, click on these, but the, those number three, number four, and number five really just give examples of what that looks like. From my perspective, and the most valuable part of this uh, uh, are two, uh, two of these items, number seven and number eight. And I'll just click on number seven, uh, the district results and uh, uh, it's important to note that the district results are um, a compilation of school results so as an example uh, if, if, if you, uh, uh, when you logged in and took the engagement process and you uh, identified yourself as a parent or guardian from Victor Point School, you were asked to respond to the questions specific to Victor Point School or Scotts Mills or Butte Creek or Pratt or whatever it may be. All of those thoughts then were combined into a composite. So there are plenty, there are all of the school specific results are here as well and, and, and principals have taken a look at those and they will also be going over those with staff and parent club as we move ahead. Uh, but the, the district specific results are, uh, are that composite. And I think it's very easy to uh, uh, jump right to uh, the assumption that uh, because something in this case like facilities and buildings has uh, uh, 1,233 stars identified with it. That's a composite of stars that are the result of concerns as well as those that are the result of, of, um, of uh, commendations or things that people appreciate about this school district. And there's plenty of ways that you can surely navigate through, through this information. Uh, uh, it's a pretty intuitive uh, um, platform. If you were to click on these, um, oops, I'm sorry, right away, uh, you would see uh, an opportunity to, to scroll through the data uh, and you would see the actual thoughts uh, that uh, that person uh, uh, contributed. This is, this, is, this is someone's thought. The first one, uh, improve maintenance throughout the building. We have things like no hot water in the boys and girls locker rooms that need to be fixed for sanitary health reasons. The alarm system does not work right. That's a safety issue. That's one comment by one person who captured it in, the, in this engagement process. And it's interesting to note, if you take a look at the number of stars in, the next, in this column, that the stars indicate the number of people who agreed generally with that statement one way or another and that they combined it into, um, in, into this being a concern. Uh, and you can also see where this uh, where this thought uh, originated, and that came from someone in the Victor Point and Silvercrest uh, Elementary School area. By the way, we combined uh, those for logistical purposes last year because we had the same principal at both schools. Uh, oops. Okay. <coughs> yeah. uh, and then you can you can scroll through again you'll see uh, clearly there's this is again what, what people would like to see uh, uh, suggested improvements for uh, for our school district related to facilities uh, and buildings uh, I think it's also important to note as you take a, a look at, at uh, uh, this information that this is a snapshot in time one moment on one day in the case of an individual who submitted this over a couple of days if they did it over a couple of days or, or even longer uh, but it was a period of time, like I said at the beginning, when a lot was going on in this school district and anything could be influencing uh, 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 the uh, members of the public one way or the other in, in a way of suggesting some items that could be improved upon and those that can be, um, those that are compliments. 
So uh, take a look at, um, at a couple of the other items as you, uh, as you go through this. Parking and transportation, this one is another one that got a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of attention from a facility standpoint or at least from a, uh, uh, from a public input stand, standpoint. And, and again, these were specific to schools. Uh, you'll see that if you were to click on the central Howell results, there are a number of folks who commented on their concerns about parking and safety at central Howell. Uh, uh, school and you'll see it reflected in the district results uh, however you see a number of comments here from as in this case from someone who uh, has had a child or had some connection to Eugene Field School uh, and is talking about the transition to uh, Mark Twain School and uh, the need for uh, pick up and drop off <coughs> improvement so you can see very quickly how this is a lot of information that can give us some pretty clear direction shouldn't say clear direction. I think some direction as a school district, but the clarity is something that, that principals have to uh, identify and prioritize specific to their school. And we as a school district, I believe, have to uh, say what is it that are uh, the priorities that came out of these results uh, as well. The, um, I want to go to take a look at. Uh, and it appears that there's just all little snapshots there, but right. it appears that. Uh, there's several comments regarding maintenance and, and that type of thing at the schools. Will the uh, principals be taking that back to our maintenance staff, or how, how do they get? Yeah, the maintenance staff is actually is actually has received this information as well. In fact, Warren Stanley and I had a conversation about it. So they're going through uh, it through it all then. They are. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Again, there's a lot of information here, and and the other piece that, that I think is just important to recognize, Wally, is that is that the um, uh, those items that are specific to to, to maintenance may also be. Uh, a, a perception or an understanding of that individual at that point. Some of these may be entirely justified. Uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned about the hot water uh, at one or more of our schools, that's for sure. And, and if that's the case, we're going to find out what that problem is and we're going to fix it. Uh, with that, however, uh, if there's someone who's concerned about a, uh, a specific uh, facility matter that, uh, that has been already addressed, or the person just misunderstood it, potentially, uh, then we want to be certain that, uh, that we clarify what we need to do with that, if anything at all. Uh, the other piece uh, that's pretty important to note and, and, and is that any, any of this information, and I shared this with the principals last week as, as well, but any of this information is going to be more valuable for us as a school district and for, for us as we make decisions about priorities if we can find other data or other metrics or other information that helps validate that is a concern. There could be something here that we say, oh yeah, absolutely, that's a concern. But if there's something related to, let's say, a, a curriculum or nutrition or, or uh, traffic flow or facilities uh, or, or even a perception uh, of how um, uh, classrooms operate or administrative decisions are made, it's, it's incredibly important that, uh, that we not only find out as much as we can about that information, but also find some other inf information that helps us uh, uh, validate it to prove the, really the definition of the issue, if it's even an issue, uh, number one, but second of all, to find out uh, how big of a priority it is. If we see it repeatedly on, in an instrument like this, and we have some other information based upon, let's say, principal conversations with parents, or, or public input that we hear at, say, an open house, then that adds more validity to that concern as compared to a snapshot of one item spoken by one person on this engagement process that 50 other people happen to say, yes, that's an important thing for us too. So uh, it, it's just something we need to be very, very attentive to as we move ahead. I want to show something else here though to you because there, there are plenty of things that, that uh, folks like uh, <coughs> in a way that will help us improve as a district. But I also think it's important to um, uh, to recognize uh, that uh, there are lots of folks in this community who feel very good about what we're doing uh, as a school district. Uh, and it's question number two, uh, what are some things that you appreciate about our school district this year? Uh, and one of the first things that, that stood out for me is, um, is that when you, when you take a look at the results, and in this case, trying to, to fold in the, a metric of some sort, and if the sorted by stars number, uh, or excuse me, the number of stars uh, is, is, is uh, any indication of how important these things are uh, to the people who contributed to them, uh, we have, in the case of their complements of teachers and staff, and I won't go through all of those, you can do that on your own, 
there are 4,101 stars that people put to that. And if you recall, just to the concerns about facilities, in the last slide, there was like 1,200 and some odd stars placed upon that. So uh, the reason I share that with you is because uh, while it's easy for us to find plenty of ways for us to improve as a school district, and you'll hear me say this repeatedly, and I'll say this as long as I'm superintendent, we will always have that. We will always have plenty of areas to improve and to grow, and that's what we do as a school district. But what's equally important, and maybe even more so in many cases, is how satisfied people are with this school district. So please be certain to take a look at how people feel about what you're doing as a school district, and you'll see there's plenty of compliments about teachers and staff, administration, school choice, and look at that, number 10, facilities and buildings, you got 222 stars saying uh, complimentary things about what you do as a school district from a facility standpoint. So uh, that's where I'm, um, I'm going to uh, end my, my comments and thoughts on this because easily a person could spend an hour on this and I encourage you to do it from the comfort of your own home uh, when, when you have uh, your laptop or your computer in front of you and you take a look at these these results after uh, we send out the public website tomorrow. Uh, and Mr. Chair, I might, my only suggestion would be at some point at a work session in the next month or two, or possibly at one of our regular sessions, uh, it, this may want to be brought up as a topic of conversation again. I did ask the uh, principals at each school to find themes that uh, were consistent with the information they had received as well, and identify two or three items specific to their school that would be priorities for them for this year. And I think we as a, as a school district have an obligation um, to do the same thing. It's just going to take us a little while to get through all of this data. That'd be a great topic. Thank you. You bet. Uh, and if I can, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm next on the. Uh, yeah, go right ahead. So, district enrollment and uh, district safety awareness week. Um, uh, well, you, each one of you has uh, you've received your um, uh, district enrollment figures for uh, uh, for the year, and what I want to share with you. Uh, what I want to share with you is, uh, again, something that is uh, not very surprising. In fact, it's uh, a little bit uh, uh, days of old. This district, uh, if you talk to begin with the year 2000 to, to today, 2016, uh, is by definition uh, experiencing flat enrollment. We continue to experience flat enrollment. I will say, over the last two or three years, we've seen a slight increase uh, in, in enrollment growth in this district, which which is good. Uh, it's, uh, it's much better than the alternative, which is declining enrollment, and nobody wants to experience that. Uh, so I, uh, I think it's important to note that while we are staying relatively flat, 50, 60 more kids maybe than we had a couple of years ago, uh, we live in a school district which continues to grow. The city of Silverton uh, is seeing uh, quite a bit of new construction, and even our rural areas are see seeing new construction. We see that recognized in the construction excise tax revenue. With that said, my belief anyway, is that while people are moving to this area and the population is growing overall, uh, the enrollment numbers are not increasing because the um, there is there is is or we are experiencing a shift of the number of students in um, uh, uh, children and families or we're having an older population move to our area. I really don't know what it is, but it's part of the reason that I suggested to you, which you've adopted as a board goal, uh, to um, uh, um, administer a, uh, a demographic study this year so we can find out a little bit more about what's going on. We have to better understand our population uh, before we go into any kind of facility planning. Uh, in the in near or distant future to be able to understand what we're looking at. Yeah, I think the last study we did several years ago indicated that they're getting more of a retirement type um, folks come moving into the community versus, C C versus young, young families. Um, also, I think if we were to take our transfers out of other districts, out of this equation, we'd probably see slightly declining enrollment. Well, let's just do that. Oh, there you uh, go. <laughs> so here's uh, annual enrollment with and without transfers for the last five years, or six years. Uh, you can see it's been oh, it's still, a, a still rising then. parallel pattern. Uh, and took a little drop this year. I put those uh, uh, as a proportion of total enrollment. 
uh, and it's hovering right at 5.1 percent this year. We're as low as 5 percent two or three years ago, uh, but anywhere between 5 and 6 percent of your total enrollment are transfers from out of district. And that, by the way, that's net transfers. So I believe this year we have about 380 students have transferred into this district and about 150-ish or so that have transferred out um, of our district. So uh, a good information for you to uh, consider as we, we move ahead. Uh, again, I'm, I'm pleased that we do have some, some growth. We are keeping a close eye on a couple little hot pockets. Uh, you know, we have a very large class at, uh, uh, at Scott's Mill School in the middle, in middle school right now. Kirsten Jorgensen has done a nice job of responding to that. Uh, she anticipated it coming. Uh, we also have, uh, even, though, even though they're uniform, uh, um, uh, some large classes at Robert Frost, I believe, uh, in the uh, uh, fifth grade, uh, and we also have have uh, one or two large classes up at uh, Victor Point School. We're keeping a cl pretty close eye on those to be certain. And again, large, the, the Scotts Mills example is the largest at 38 in that uh, uh, blended seventh, eighth gra grade class. She has 1.2 teachers assigned to that class and also has a couple of EAs assigned to that class to help minimize the impact. Uh, but in the cases of Robert Frost and Victor Point, we're talking about uh, 30 kids or so in classes. So I think you have to ask yourself, is that manageable? Depends upon what grade level it is. We're talking middle school is a little bit more palatable, has some larger class sizes as compared to your intermediate or elementary class numbers. So again, we're keeping a close eye on things and I commend your principals. They've done a very, very nice job because they have a tool with their transfer approval process to be able to buffer that. And any of these larger classes that we have have been unexpected, either unexpected move-ins over the summer or as in the case of Scott's Mills, we knew that that large bubble was coming through and, and the, uh, Kirsten has done a nice job of addressing it. So that's some very quick information on enrollment and where we are as a school district. So right. we'll answer any questions if you have any. Yeah, Andy, I was just looking at, looking at some of the data on the um, on the class sizes in the elementary schools. You look at like the from fourth, fifth through eighth grades. You've got a lot of the class sizes up in the three hundreds, and then you look we look at the kindergartens through third grades, and we're down like kindergartens on two forty three, first grade mm -hmm. two sixty. <laughs> And so, I mean, are we are we actually looking at a potential decline coming up? I, uh, and just looking at what what we see, you know, those are going to work their way into high schools, and so yeah, we get a bunch of move-ins. Right. That's kind of uh, fine. I, I I find that interesting. I I, I didn't expect to see that. Sure. Uh, I think it's a little more pronounced this year than we've seen in the past. Tom, I think mm -hmm. you need to keep a pretty close eye on that. Uh, when, when you think about the uh, uh, proportion of students that are approved as transfers, there, there's a, a tendency for there to be a higher percentage of transfers the higher the grade levels, uh -huh. uh, which is just an interesting dynamic. I, 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 don't, I don't entirely get it, but it's also one of the things that we discovered when we made the determination that our K-1-2 students would all fit at Mark Twain because we banked on the fact that our kindergarten numbers are generally smaller than they are by the time they get to third or fifth grade when we get more transfers approved and there's a little bit more flexibility. I think there's general some, generally some protection of, of that as well. Principals don't uh, approve uh, the higher class numbers at kindergarten for transfers. They try to keep those class numbers as low as possible uh, for a variety of reasons and I think that's just good management. So well, I mean, Yeah, it, it, it makes sense because you wouldn't want to approve a transfer at a lower grade and then all of a sudden you're overcrowded you, you don't want to have to rescind some Somebody. Exactly. Well, it's best to be cautious. So, okay, that's a good explanation of that. Okay. Safety yeah. week. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, that's just a, a placeholder. Uh, our 17th through the uh, 21st of October is our school-wide uh, district uh, safety awareness week, and uh, administrators are meeting tomorrow morning to discuss more uh, about that. But there'll be drills and plenty of activities and uh, lots of communication going on about safety in schools specific to that week as we start off the year. Good. Thanks, Andy. All right, Mrs. Stevens, transportation update. I just wanted to give you a quick update um, on the information I gave you uh, two weeks ago with regard to transportation, how we're doing with um, our transition from first student to Durham. I'm pleased to announce that the number of phone calls continue to dwindle exponentially as the weeks progress, so we're happy about that. And the calls I'm taking now are mostly simple logistic issues that they're needing help with. and. Um, maybe some practices that are, are rooted in how we've done things for 25 years and so the new company's trying to figure out what we're doing. 
So um, we also had uh, April Murphy, our positive behavior support specialist, meet with the bus company uh, today to begin um, a plan for training our drivers in how to use positive behavior supports when they're working with children. So they're using the same language and reinforcing positive behaviors in the same manner that our teachers and the rest of our staff does. So we're excited to have that training for them. That's not ever anything that they've been provided with the school. So we're excited for that partnership and we think we'll see um, payoffs uh, with regard to kids having the same message with whatever uh, person they're dealing with with regard to the school district. The um, final item is that uh, John and his crew continue to assess our routes and I've asked him to have a proposal to me by the end of the month so that I can provide that to Mr. Belando who can then bring it forward to the board with the idea that if we have to make adjustments with routes uh, including adding buses to our services, I would prefer to do that in, in November fairly quickly so that we can get that under our belt before we go into the holiday season and weather issues and all of those things. So I have a commitment from him and the regional manager that they'll have any kind of proposal and associated costs with those proposals to me by the end of the month. So. Sounds great. Yeah. I'm, I, glad, I'm glad it's improving. Yeah, I, I think so. I think just took a little more time than any of us had anticipated with the change in the schools and reconfigurations of who's going where and what's it look like. Sure. So. Right. Okay. Any, any questions for Dandy? All right, thank you. Okay, we have the uh, Charter School Annual Report from Bethany Charter School. Karen Bukai? Oh, Mr. Chair, you have a uh, financial uh, report. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Steve, financial report. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Steve. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Everybody's uh, got to do it for this. <laughs> well, uh, the good news uh, is the, the uh, financial statements for the first quarter of the new fiscal year are, are tracking just, just fine. Uh, we're really just getting going, obviously, getting into September here. And uh, so, so we're doing doing just fine there as compared to what we had budgeted. The bad news is, is the, uh, the, the PERS board has now adopted their 2017-19 rates. Uh, um, they, they did that on Friday, September 30th, and we've been talking about this for a year, year and a half now, and knew it was coming. And they, and they, uh, they didn't disappoint. Um, our, the, for our district specifically, uh, the Tier 1 and Tier 2 rates went from uh, where we're currently at is 11.47% of payroll, uh, which uh, will last through the end of this, uh, this school year, and that will increase to 17.08% of payroll beginning on July 1st uh, of next year. And the officer uh, rate, or tier three, uh, is jumping from 6.78% of payroll to 11.75% of payroll. So between those two rates, we're, we're, we're jumping five to five and a half percentage points uh, between the two. If you take the average of that and multiply 5.2% uh, of our uh, budgeted payroll for this year, uh, that equates to uh, between 900000 to a million dollar per year increase next biennium in PERS costs just in the general fund. Uh, which is just over 50% uh, increase in, in our PERS costs. So it's, it's a big number, um, really not, not uh, really different than, than, than what we expected, maybe, maybe slightly higher, but we knew it was going to be 40 to 50% uh, increase there. And that's, that's about what we expected, actually. What's that? I thought we expected around a million dollars, and we were yeah. guessing yeah, absolutely. a while back. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, just the way the system is set up for this round, the school districts uh, experienced a little higher increase than you know, cities and counties, but, but everybody's getting hit hard by this. And, and again, just as a, as a reminder, the, the, uh, this, this round of rates is based on the 2014 and 2015 calendar year investment performance, which we know both of those years did not uh, meet the 7.75% assumed earnings rate that the PERS system has. Uh, and then also we couple that with the, uh, the, the portions of the reform uh, that was reversed in the, in, the, in the state Supreme Court. So those two things uh, both contributed to, to, this, to this rate increase. And you know, unless we see huge investment performance for 2016 and 2017, and, um, I know we're almost all the way through 2016. Um, it hasn't been then, huge. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, then we can expect also to see an increase, maybe not to this magnitude, but an increase uh, for the 1921 rates as well. But that's, it's still too early to tell, but they're, 
been talking about that already as well. So, all right. Thank you. Any questions for Steve? All right, Karen. <laughs> We do have her report in, in our packet. So, well, I got sent in, so what, beyond the report, what would you like? Wow. <laughs> um, did a little bit of research on the numbers and the performance of the students in, in Bethany regarding math and math and science is around is, is approximately average for our district. So you're doing a fine job, but since you're kind of focused on ag, I would have kind of expected your math and science to be a little bit on the upper end of things. Can you explain some things that maybe you're doing to uh, help improve that? Um, they're reworking the curriculum a little bit, going back to standard curriculum and Common Core. And part of the difficulty we have with test results is it's a different grouping test tested each year being compared. So it's, we don't have the scores for the same group. You have to look at the previous year. Sure. And so that. So you think some of them might be due to the students you have? Yeah. And we had some parents opt out as well so that didn't help scores okay. any questions from her report concerns anything you need from the board don't think so right. we're very pleased to have our association with you guys so okay i think it's been going well miss chair i'm sure go ahead tim how'd your auction go um, question, but I'm just curious. I, I think they made about 6,000 gross on the auction this, in the spring. Um, so it was a little bit less this year, but um, we got a new committee working on it, so they're hoping for the better this next year. So. Good. I was just going to su suggest that uh, you've had, we've had some good conversation uh, recently about um, uh, uh, the facilities at Bethany Charter School and and, uh, and traffic flow and uh, things like that. Karen, do you, do you, can you comment a little bit on that, on, on how your board is, is feeling about that and any aspirations that you have to improve some of that or change some of that? Well, the latest is we've been talking with the owner of the fields surrounding us, and he's proposed a land swap. Um, with part of our lower area in exchange for a <clears throat> section that's up by the road. And so that's something to maybe explore further. Um, we're also trying to get him to agree to a gate so we can utilize um, the area that belongs to the Bethany that's right next to the fence at the playground for teacher parking. And so that would clear up the parking lot more um, we do have the flashing light, and we do have the... Which is a huge improvement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we do have the staff out monitoring drop-off and pick-up and try to keep traffic moving through there and safety concerns. They're trying their best to keep track of that. So How would you utilize that steep area? If we might have to do some fill, but we could use the steep area for parking. And wow, it's really steep right now. Which side of the school are you talking about? That would be the, the, wet, the west side. West side, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess, personally, I'd, I'd encourage steep. you guys to purchase a school and you can do everything you want with it. But, um, <laughs> it, it gets tricky when you guys are a tenant, basically, Yeah. Um, of that building. Yeah. We, we've talked about it, but since the charter contract reads that if we go belly up, you guys get everything anyway, it's not fiscally... Um, advantageous for us to purchase. Well, if you have a different proposal, I think we'd be, <laughs> be interested in listening, hearing yeah. from you. So, well, we keep tossing possibilities, so. Okay. And. All right. Any other questions for Karen? All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Nancy Griffith, Silverton Middle School. First report from Silverton Middle School. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. 
So yes, this is my first report for Silverton Middle School. Um, just looking at the report Andy gave on the total numbers, we did lose one seventh grader since the beginning of October. So we're at 449 students right now. Uh, we just gained another basic skills student and another structured learning program student. So those are starting to fill up. So we're working with our teachers on that. We have some new faces. Oh, and that says Mark Twain. Sorry, that should say Silverton Middle School. Um, it's, I'm still getting used to it. Sometimes I want to say that. So we do have uh, three really great hires. Uh, AJ Buckles is coming to us from Sublimity and is like he's always been there. So it's pretty great. And Lindsay and Colleen are both newer teachers, and they're fitting right in uh, with the new the new family. So a couple of things that we've done uh, using SBAC, since we got the SBAC early enough this last year, we have two math support classes. And so what we did was we used our SBAC scores and teacher recommendation to place students in there. It does take away an elective opportunity, so we wanted to be very careful with that. We also used uh, SBAC scores and goals from IEPs to do two push-in math classes, where Dan Gorgas, our LRC teacher, is actually in a seventh grade class and in an eighth grade class co-teaching in the hopes to give those students some more support for that. Our focus this year obviously has been opening the school. And so first I'd like to just publicly thank our maintenance and custodial crews. They worked so many hours and so hard just to get it so that we could be in there as teachers and then continued with that so that our students could be there and the school was ready for them when they got there. And it for the most part was absolutely ready for them when they got there. We did our first week a little differently. We had our eighth graders come in first. We wanted to create an opportunity for them to be mentors. And so they got to learn all the procedures and had the tours of the school and met with their teachers. And then on the second day, we had our sixth and seventh graders come in and the AG teachers, advisory group teachers, um, asked if there were any volunteers in their classes who would like to stay and help out with the sixth and seventh graders. And there were probably 28th graders who made the choice to stay and do that. So that was a really nice leadership opportunity for them. And they weren't even our leadership kids. So we're really happy that they chose to do that. And then we had special schedules on Thursday and Friday just to do AG bonding. We had a great together uh, kickoff assembly on Friday where everybody was together trying to incorporate the sixth grade students in with the seventh and eighth graders has been interesting because it's a change in the way that we think about how we run the school and so making sure that they're part of we used to have quads where it would be you know group of four teachers and so now we have quints so that we've got five um, five groups so that they're always included in all of our competitions assemblies all of that so it's been and I love having the sixth graders there it just adds a completely different feel to the environment so it's been great with those teachers too we've done four different open houses and tours so far this year. We had our first one for our Falcon families. Thought it was important that they get to see it first. And then you guys came, and sorry, it was my birthday that day, so <laughs> I was at Jerry Frank's eating cake while you guys were touring the school. But uh, Christy did talk with me, and you guys asked some great questions, and I appreciate those. And so, well, if you have any in just a moment. She did a great job. She showed us. Yeah, yeah very good. She's, she's great. Um, the Merchants Group toured the campus on the 5th. So I took them on a mini tour, showed them the different places, and then we had our first Friday community open house. And I think, Andy, you think there was probably 100 people? Yeah, that's what I estimated. Yeah, yeah 100 people good. came through. We had student-led uh, tours where the, we had volunteers who came, and then people could also do a self-guided tour. We had a nice little tour sheet for them. So those are the ones that we have did, and we had several staff there to answer any questions, show off the rooms, you know. And I think most of the people that were there had been students at the high school. Mm -hmm. They wanted to see what it looked like now. So yeah. there were a lot of disappointed people when they saw the Area 38. So we call it Area 38 because it's the 1938 version of the bill. Yeah, and so it's Area 38. We can't go there. Uh, so there were a lot of people like, well, can't we? No, sorry. Uh, any, any other comments you heard? Uh, they were really now? surprised at how clean it looked. <laughs> you know, that was a lot of it. Like, oh my gosh, the last time I was in here, it, you know, I heard a lot of that too. So. Again, back to the maintenance and custodial crews doing just a fantastic mm -hmm. job making it our middle school and not the old high school, which was... Well, the old MP area, that was... Oh, yeah. Impressive. Yeah, definitely, definitely. 
So now that we're into the school year and everybody's in their rooms, uh, we're starting off our staff professional development. We're going to continue to focus on the Danielson rubric, and this year teachers decided they would like to do the same one so they can support each other. And then working on how to stay connected. This campus is obviously a lot different than both Mark Twain and Robert Frost, where our sixth grade teachers are, were. And then we've got a training plan to revisit the vision statement. Now that we've got nine additional teachers, seven additional classified staff all together. So we're going to revisit that. What does it mean to be a Silverton Middle School Falcon? And what are we trying to get our students to do when they leave us? You know, what, what, what does that student look like? So we'll be doing that shortly, too. We had a couple of previous events that I wanted to just touch on. We had our safety walk audit, and it was kind of rainy, so we didn't have many parents at that one. But one of the auditors had shared that, that the drop-off in the morning was um, one of the better ones she'd seen at schools in similar locations. So it, thank you to the district office staff who helped for those first couple weeks trying to get it all flowing. But she said it, compared to some of the other places she'd seen, it was really smooth. So that was a nice thing to hear. There might be people who don't think that, but you know, from what she'd seen in other places, that's what she felt. We also did a bike rodeo. Uh, one of the things that we heard was people were concerned about safety, bicyclists in the neighborhood, and so we did that on Thursday the 6th, and the students seemed to enjoy it, so that was a nice thing. And then we have an upcoming event on November 14th. It's our fourth annual Veterans Day Assembly. Our leadership puts that together and it's uh, to honor the veterans of our community. So it's gonna be from 150 to 250 in the gym and you are all welcome to come by and see it. All right, thank you. Were there any surprises you had to react to? What day? <laughs> can, you give, can you give us like, give some examples of things you had to work through? Well, so, so we had our, our PBS team, they had you know, received some time that they could come in and work before school started. And so we decided that there are certain areas that we don't want kids to go. Mm -hmm. And so we got some red spray paint and we very carefully drew lines around to kind of create a, a false hallway in some of those outer wings that are on the outside. So that all happened. And then we had our little Falcon white. I don't know if you guys saw that mm -hmm. on the tour. Yeah. And that was all done and we're so proud of ourselves. And then they came in and did all the fire lines in red. And so now we're like, oh, <laughs> which lines are they now gonna know to follow? But they were smart enough to figure that out. So that was just one like, oh, you know, and there's mm -hmm. um, unfortunately been some things that we found in the field where they go play. And so we just collect them and we have a little box of you know, neat things that we find in the field. And um, <laughs> so it's, you know, we just put up uh, we were finding that people were driving on the grass over by the tennis court, so maintenance put some barriers up so that we could actually grow some grass out there. And so just, I mean, there's always things in a building, mm -hmm. you know, that you go, oh, hmm, didn't think of that. So, so yeah. Okay. Do the kids go out to the field by the tennis courts then? Yes. On that side? So we uh, got the, finally got the portable basketball hoops delivered and put up. <coughs> so there's two of those in the tennis courts right now, and they're used all the time. Oh, good, good. When we're out there. And then rainy day, we go into the lower gym, and the PE classes are upstairs in the mezzanine, so we can actually have both things oh, running at the same time, oh, so good. it's nice. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, do you have any board reports this evening? And I don't believe there's any correspondence, so we'll go ahead and open up with a second audience with visitors. Would anybody like to address the board get this evening? Okay, we'll move on to action item. We have one action item to adopt the revisions to the charter agreement with Community Roots Charter School as a result of the school site change. Do we have a motion? Move for approval. Second. Move to second. It. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, at this time we'll go ahead and adjourn the regular session and move to executive session for ORS 192.6602F to consider information or records that are exempt from law from public inspection, consideration of sick leave bank requests. Thanks for coming.